Hey friends and followers, I'm Ro, your friendly neighborhood developer. Today, we'll discuss how to make the sign up and sign in processes easier for your SaaS apps when using Okta. I'll show you how to support third party digital identities. We'll also discuss the different options at your disposal, and then I'll show you how to enable them in your Okta cell. Now, this is a follow up from our last video where I discussed how to start your journey with Okta. I've added a link in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And again, this video is from the point of view of a developer, a developer wanting to bring a web-based SaaS app to the market and wishes to make the user experience as seamless as possible. So let's get into it. Let's start by discussing your options. When you use IDAS providers like Okta, your users can sign in with their email and password. This is where identity is managed by your OctaCell itself. Alternatively, your users choose to sign in with an external identity provider like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, or Apple. This is called social login or social authentication. This is certainly an appealing option. I mean, why force your users to remember yet another username and password when they can log in with an external identity provider that they already trust? And lastly, your users can use something called Inbound Federation or Inbound SAML. This is where you allow your users to sign in with other identity providers that support OpenID Connect or SAML protocols. An example would be allowing users to sign in to their corporate networks as long as they support the aforementioned protocols. Now, depending on your use case, you can choose either one of these approaches or a combination of them. You can also define a logic to determine which identity provider individual end users are routed to when they authenticate. This is accomplished by something called routing rules. So as a practical exercise, what we'll do today is I'll walk you through the steps involved in allowing self-service registration on your Okta cell. Then we'll enable users to log in with Office 365 or Microsoft accounts. Here, Microsoft serves as the service provider and we'll use OpenID Connect to enable this integration. And lastly, we'll run an app locally and play with routing rules. So let's get into the fun techie bit. Yay! To follow along and enable self-service registration, you'll need to use the classic UI. Here, Navigate to the directory and then self-service registrations menu item. Once you're on the page, click enable registration. This should bring up a form with some default values. Have a look around the form and if you're happy, save the form. After you enable self-service registration, a sign up link appears in the Okta sign in widget. Users who select this link are directed to a new create account registration form based on a customized registration policy. Let's see this in action. Based on my configuration, new users simply need to submit a valid email address along with their first and last names. Once their email has been verified, they're good to sign in. Here, the app that we created in the last video now allows users to sign in as well as register, all without changing any application code on our side. Now, let's see how to allow your users to sign in with their Microsoft and Office 365 accounts. To enable this, you will need an Azure subscription. We'll start by signing into the Azure portal and opening up Azure Active Directory. Here, we choose the option to add an app registration as shown. To create one, you need three things, namely um, a name. In my case, I'm using login.contosoelectronics.org. You'll also need to choose the option that suits you. I wanted to enable logins for all Microsoft accounts as well as Office 365 accounts in my organization. And I've chosen the appropriate option. And lastly, you need to add the redirect URL to point to your Okta tenant. This will be your host name followed by the path 
OAuth2 slash v1 slash authorize slash callback. Once you press save, it creates your app registration. Have a look around the overview page. There's some interesting details here, but we'll come back to that. To have a look at the branding page, this one allows you to add customized logos to your Office 365 logins. Now it's time to create a client secret. Remember to copy the secret for later. You're going to need it when configuring Okta. You now need to configure your token and add optional claims. We'll add the email claim and We'll also add the OpenID Connect scopes. Now it's time to configure the API permissions. Here we'll use Microsoft Graph and add delegated permissions for the following OpenID Connect scopes, namely email, profile and OpenID. Now, it's time to add an identity provider in your OctaCell. To add one, you navigate to Security, then Identity Providers, and add Microsoft as the identity provider in your OctaCell. Most of the details will already be pre-populated. All you need to do is copy the client secret from the previous steps and add a client ID, which you'll find on the overview page of your app registration. Lastly, let's add a routing rule to configure a select group of users to use the Microsoft Identity Provider we just created. We're now ready to test everything out and see things in action. We'll try logging into the app that we created earlier, but this time instead of using the username and password from Okta, we'll log in with Microsoft. Nice, looks like things are working just as expected. Now, I hope this helps you expedite your journey with Okta. As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all soon. Later.